Oh yes, howdy folks, and it's, I guess we'll call it part two of the uh, TTC 450 from Two Trees. It's the CNC high-speed router, the new one. I think the actual release date is February 15th is what it's been set for. But anyways, uh, we'll be talking about this more today. I also got something else going on here, and I've got to show it because it's just, it's really nice. Uh, my uh, coffee bean grinder <sighs> died. So we'll put this up here for a second and just show it to you. And what happened was uh, there's a really nice couple up there in the Northwest. Awesome people, uh, Carol and Greg. And apparently they said, don't ask any questions, but this morning, boom, look what shows up. <laughs> a really nice, awesome coffee grinder. And I've been reading the instructions on how to use it. Also, uh, my son over in Statesboro, Georgia, he uh, sent me this and I haven't been able to grind it because uh, no grinder. So we're gonna be grinding some beans shortly. This is from a, a cool beans store in Statesboro, Georgia. Apparently they do a lot of this uh, custom kind of, you know, coffee beans kind of thing. So we'll be checking that out uh, soon. I made 10 cups this morning, so I'd love to have an excuse and say, well, you know what, that 10 cups didn't taste right. I think I'll just grind some new beans and start over again. <laughs> One, th one thing after another. Man, I love it. So we've got this. Uh, this is highly rec comes highly recommended. So apparently it's quite the coffee bean machine for grinding. So we'll have to actually do a review on this uh, sometime in the near future because I do drink a lot of coffee and tools. The other day I was thinking, if you had to do a without one, you, you had to go without any more tools or you had to go with no more coffee for the rest of your life, which would it be? Apparently, I would keep the coffee going and the tools would have to go bye-bye. <laughs> Let's get back into the CNC. Yeah. Yeah, uh, one of the things I wanted to do was talk a little bit more about a couple features that I missed on. We had to rush the program out last um, last week and it was everything was just like, whoa, okay. Yes, there's a contest going on that will give away three of these machines from Two Trees, and I'll have a link in the description below where you can enter that contest and get yourself, hopefully, maybe win yourself one of these machines. The other thing was, uh, I'm also going to be putting some links in for software and other things that we just discuss, I guess, today, but uh, the first thing I missed on that I didn't get a chance to tell you guys about was the uh, each of these accesses, the X, the Y, and the Z, have hard limits at both ends, the high and the low, you know, side to side, front to back, there are hard limits. And that's something kind of important to know because uh, an expensive machine, you really want that on there, you know. And this is another thing, the price. I was comparing the size to the prices. And when I looked at the size of the machine coming in at the time, I put it somewhere around, you know, $1,200, $1,500, somewhere in that range because it is in that size category. This is the <clears throat> biggest desktop, you know, that I know of in this size for the price. The price is right now, and that's another thing, uh, there's a discount. I've got a link in the description below for code right now that's good for, I don't know how many days, but there's $100 off the price. So theoretically, you should be able to pick this up for $8.99 right now. Huh. Wow, yeah, good price. It's it's brand new, it's so hot off the line, you're probably looking at maybe a pre-order. I don't even know if, they can, if they're ready to ship these things just yet, because like I said, the release was uh, February the 15th, so awesome. Uh, another feature was, I didn't really get into it, was the spoil board has these uh, pre-drilled and pre-threaded holes everywhere for these clamps. So you should be able to put clamps wherever you need to one of the things I do not like about anybody's clamps, and this is no different, is these high bolts. I don't like that idea. I kind of like my stuff low profile, keep it away from, you know, this thing moving around. And if it gets out of control and hits one of these, it, you know, it could, could be a mess. And so I'm hoping that at some point somebody would come up with something. I might work, work on that myself and come up with a better clamp system that's low profile that doesn't have this high uh, bolt situation. That's probably the only negative in all of this. The, the biggest thing I really like, and I used it again this morning, was the uh, touchscreen control system. And we didn't really spend some time with that. So let's close up on the touchscreen for a minute and I'll just show you 
what's there, you know, for features, because it's it's all good. Yes, like like I promised, part two, we'll get into more detail. So I'm going to power this up, and this way you can see uh, what this can what this touch screen is actually going to do. Right now, the working and the mechanical uh, coordinates are showed, shown right here on the top of the screen, and then you have these three buttons down below. Really, really nice and basic and simple. You can hit your control button, and this will allow you to clear these accesses if you need to. Also, you have knife. Knife, we'll get into that in a minute here, but that is for uh, dialing in your Z probe. That is to tell the machine where that bit is going to be, because once you change a bit, you have a different length or height. So you want to be able to zero it in, so you use knife. And also you can move side to side, or you can move up and down with the Z. And you can move to the left, the right, or forward and back, all right there on the touch screen. Uh, also you can dial this in, so you, right now I'm set right here at 10 millimeter. You can change that to 0.1 of a millimeter or whatever movement you know, you're know you going to be comfortable with as you move your bit around to get it honed into the spot you want. Uh, you also have a spindle switch here, which I'll just sort of hit that and you hear the, you know, whoa, okay, the spindle starts and stop. And you have low speed, so you can turn the machine down for speed so that, you know, nothing happens too fast for you if that's what you need. There's a next button here, we're going to hit that, and that, we've got cooling and position and homing, so you can actually bring the machine home if you want. Now, I'm going to jump off that and go to the next button, the center button here, sculpture. If you had files loaded on your micro SD card, or TF card as I like to call it, uh, you have sculpture, so you can pick from sculpture. I have no files loaded up, I use everything from the computer, so of course this is blank. There's nothing in there right now for files, but there could be if I loaded some files up. Then I'll go back and back button again, and then we're going to go to tools. And tools is really kind of interesting. You can set the volume of your beep, if it's annoying, or if you want to turn it up so you can hear it. Uh, language, of course, well, English in this case. Also, Wi-Fi is shown here, and you can see that the Wi-Fi is connected, which it has. And also, it gives you the information about the board and the CPU, and also what volume you're running at this time for uh, firmware. So, all the information is there. Really, that's, at least at this point, that's, you can go back here, back button. This is, again, back to home. That's all the information you should need right now makes it really easy to set up and get going kind of thing with this machine and you can test all the movement and everything to make sure everything is right and ready to go when you're ready to say put your project in well, let's do the z uh, probe here for a second i'll back up and you can see what's what's happening so just using the controls we're going to set the uh give the machine a reference to where that bit is right now because that's a cutting bit and we need to know where it's at so uh, I'm going to go to uh, controls and I'm going to tell the machine to home. Okay, so we're homing and we're going to hit all the limit switches. Boom. Uh, yeah, we're all set. Okay, homing is successful. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to put this underneath the bit and put the alligator pin on the bit and just bring this over here where the bit can come down and touch it. And I'm going to hit knife. And what's happening is the machine is going to come down very slowly right now and it's looking for this right now. The minute it touches it, that will become zero. That is the zero height. It has a, it gives it a reference to where it's at. So it's going to touch it in a second, which it will. Boom. Yep. Bang. There we go. And now it's going to back off and say, you know, that was the probe successful? Well, yes, it was. So, okay, we're good. So now we're zeroed. Now the machine has a reference to exactly where that bit is on this uh, work bed right now. So we've got our CNC machine. We're here. We're all set up. We're ready to go. What's next? And this is where we step away from everybody's CNC machine. We're going to go to the world. Yeah, we need it. We need software, and we're going to need a. I use a laptop anytime I'm driving anything like this in the shop, and. I think if you get a small, cheap, inexpensive laptop kicking around, it probably would be a, it might be a good idea. I use an, uh, an old Mac, you know, laptop, but uh, it does a great job. And as I said before, the software they included with this uh, will only work on PC. So that sort of, you know, cut me out of the deal right away. But that's okay. It doesn't matter. I, I don't want that software. I don't use it. Uh, I have my own, you know, favorites or whatever. But I'm going to share all that with you because... I want you to be able to have a good experience from the right from the get-go. And if you're new to CNC machine but you want to get into wood carving and things, 
you're going to need software and it can get to be quite a you know extensive road and there are two roads to go through and the first one which they offer is uh art cam which has been out of oh it's they stopped supplying it a couple of years ago from autodesk so i'm not sure how uh two trees is, is giving it but they give some information about it and what that is it's it's actually a i call it manual type software where you actually type in the g code to tell the instructions as to the machine to what to do that's eh, kind of cool but uh, i'm going to give you like i said my side of it i prefer to design throw it into a g code sender and have the machine run that for me so I like what I do. It's easy, you know, but and easy is sometimes really good, you know. But the first basic one is uh, UGS, which is Universal G Code Sender. And that is a free download. It'll work on Mac or PC. I don't know about Linux. Uh, if somebody can comment about Linux, I'll bet you there's tons of software for Linux to run uh, CNC machines from. I'll bet you there's a whole world there, but I can't go there because I'm dealing with Apple at all times. But uh, anyways, this uh, G-Code sender, this will work with PC or Apples. So you just download the uh, WGS file. It's a small file and put it on like a laptop or something you can plug into this with. And that'll start to, that'll give you your very first uh, piece of software you're going to need to send something over to the machine to tell it here do this you know the second one is uh, kind of shady kind of questionable because there are different again different flavors of it but uh, the freebie one would be carbide uh, create and I'll give you links for both of these pieces of software because you'll need both of them in order to you know do something the carbide create is really uh it's like a learn or i guess we'll call it uh, we'll call it light or whatever because they have a pro uh experience that you can buy into but i'm saying just use the free version to begin with and then maybe shop out uh depending on your price and your budget as to what you want for um running your cnc with and what your plans are uh, there is tremendous software out there that can do all kinds of you know gobbledygook stuff that's really cool on any CNC machine and especially with one of this size you can really you know create fairly large signage or huge carvings of lion's heads or you know dragons or whatever it is you're into. The Carbide Create is uh, really kind of basic and it's limited so what it is is you know you have text and shapes and that sort of thing and you can bring them in and then create a tool path, which is going to tell the machine, you know, roughly what you want. Then you'll save that file. Then you'll go into uh, Universal G Code Sender. You'll open that same file up, which will be a 2D2 dot whatever uh, NC or something. Uh, anyways, you'll open that file up, and in G Code Sender, you will uh, be able to tweak and make the last little bit of uh, changes and settings on it. And then you save it, and then you can go ahead and start the machine up and it will walk through that pace. Uh, last but not least, I'll also mention that yes, you probably will break a few milling bits before, you know, you get good at it. <laughs> but uh, this machine here, I have not broken any bits. I can't even explain that because I was thinking I'll probably break about three before I, you know, got the hang of it or something, but I didn't break any so far. And I've done a number of different projects that uh, just for test sort of like cuts and stuff. I did a funky little pattern the other day and I'm looking around for it here and I have no idea what I've done with it, but it, it's, it's irrelevant. There's a couple circles with some triangles in between and yeah, it came up pretty fancy looking. It was nice, you know. Uh, so those are the two programs and, and uh, we'll get, you know, get your links set up for that. The programs after that are really gonna be depending on, you know, you know your budget for what you wanna spend on it because you've got that much money tied up in the machine and I, I, I've seen it out there. There is programs out there that they, other people on other YouTube channels will tell you to go and buy that are $1,800. And they're like, whoa, huh? The software is more than the machine? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Carve, Carver Co, I think it's called, has a really nice package. It's not bad, it's, it's a subscription. It's $15 a month. But it seems to be a pretty good, powerful software. It's not bad, you know. But I, I'm low budget, man. And even a subscription to me is like, no. Uh, I had to buy Lightburn 
for the laser machines and that cost me $60 for the license and I wasn't happy about it but it was like okay we, we're gonna have to have it because we want to do lasers for a while and check it all out and that was a steep learning curve uh, it's a frustrating program because it's glitchy you know uh, the main program that I like to use and I have not used it for CNC but it can be used for CNC is uh, Fusion 360 I use that for designing and making all my 3d print models and what have you uh, also use it to check other other types of uh, functions out that include everything from laying out furniture in a living room to building a cabinet to you know you name it and the Fusion 360 is a very steep leaning learning curve they tell me and as, as a lot of CNC people out there to this day that still tell me oh no that's it's too hard to learn that man I, I can't use that and um, I have to admit I love Fusion 360 I think it's just the very best you know designer uh, program out there it has the most you know it just seems to have the, the right functions for everything you need to do but anyways we'll go back yeah uh, software is the other end of it and software is the problem because there's so many flavors I guess we're gonna say out there that there's no point in uh, me demonstrating this machine beyond this point right now other than you know cutting something in you know I'm it's really based on software and what what you have in you know in your computer that's gonna run this machine uh, using using those two basic ones you can do quite a bit with it um, it's gonna be limited of course you're not gonna be able to do a great big lion's head with beautiful 3d you know relief or something but you'll be able to get some basics done making signage and home signs and uh, man cave signs and you know whatever but, uh, so it's good you know it, it'll get you started that's the whole thing you know so uh, what else can I tell you about well we've got uh, just a minute here and just Oh my God, that's good. Oh, anyways, now, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we've got, uh, this was part two. I don't know if there'll be a part three down the road or not because I think we've covered everything uh, as far as features and everything go, but I just wanted to get the software covered because in the past, some of the machines we've had in here, I've sort of reluctantly not talked about the software because it can get, like I said, with a light burn thing with the lasers, it's very glitchy. So I don't like to get into it too much because, you know, we could spend the rest of the year talking about how to use light burn and showing you different demos or something. Uh, same with 3D printing. Uh, I considered doing uh, shows where we would do three, Fusion 360 and how it works on a 3D printer or something. Uh, but again, it's like we could spend years every week talking about it and getting you know walking people through the the process or something it's a lot to learn on fusion 360 but like i said i love the program the uh cnc same thing uh there is so many different uh software packages out there for cnc and i, I think you have to be kind of careful uh the good thing is i believe i'm gonna try to remember the name it's not gonna come to me now but it's a um it's free for 30 days i think it's inventor I believe is the name of it, and it has CNC, really good CNC, really good CNC software package, but it's expensive. In fact, it's it's just out of my budget. It just can't afford to do it. But I had it for 30 days uh, a while back, and they won't sign me back up again for another trial. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, it was a very good, very good software package for running CNCs, and it will it some it was surprised me how much it will do because it would do the uh, 3D relief and stuff into carving and all that. And that was like, oh, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going to stop at this point. Mm. God, that coffee smells good. Wow. Anyways, uh, and so thank you for watching. And please like and subscribe and share and ring the notice bell. Uh, we'll be trying to look for more contests and giveaway stuff for the future. But we've, I think we've got another winner uh, in coming in the door. Got some very interesting tools that are here right now and uh, some very interesting tools that are coming in. So it's all going to be very cool this year, I hope. Oh yes. Hey, thank you so much for watching guys and girls. And I'm out of here and uh, uh, over and out. Yeah. Mm.